yes, yes, so hell is here. Today we have another Diana and Kudinova reaction and this is Take On Me. I've noticed in the description that this is arranged by Alexander Stupin. In the comments of my previous videos I've been told that he also did those arrangements. For example, Wicked Game and Personal Jesus. You can check out my reactions to them in my Diana playlist up here. Those arrangements really did change the song from the original. It did this in a variety of ways but most noticeably was harmonically. So in terms of the chord progressions being different to the original chord progressions. But there were other differences too. So I like the fact that he has done this arrangement. I'm hoping there'll be some more cool changes and differences to look out for compared to the original song. The original song, I don't need to say too much about it. Everyone knows it. I've got it up here. Nearly two billion views on YouTube. And this is a song from the 80s. It's famous for its large range in the chorus. We go from here to here. So that's about two and a half octaves. <laughs> Overall, I think this would suit Diana's range quite well. The lowest note is below her range from what we've seen before, so I'm interested to see how they handle that. And in terms of the top note as well, I've not seen her go much higher than that. So I'm thinking this arrangement, it will either be in a different key to account for this on either end, or the melody has been adjusted, or maybe both. That top note, that famous note, the E5. It's funny because having listened to so much crazy musical talent in my recent reaction videos, Dimash, Pentatonix, Voice Play, Home Free, Gabrielle Enyiki, Forestella, the list goes on. That note doesn't really have that much of a shock factor anymore, it doesn't seem that high, but whenever this song is played out on about that high note, you always have men in particular struggling to sing it. But look, that's not the point of this song. It's an extremely popular song for other reasons. It's quirky, it's catchy, you'll struggle to find anyone in the world who probably doesn't know the melody. So let's get straight into it. Nice top note there, nice tone. And what, what's this bit? Sounds interesting. Um, let's do a pause here, we're about halfway through, and let's go over what we've heard so far. Actually, you know what, it's a short video, only two minutes, there's one minute left. And there's already a lot to say, so it's probably best that we just watch to the end, and then afterwards we can go over the analysis. So I'll rewind a bit and then we'll carry on to the end. Oh, that went by quickly. That felt like 20 seconds. Again, that high note, especially towards the end there. I, that last note gave me goosebumps. All right, I mean, look, that was very, very interesting. Very cool. Very short, but sometimes short is good. All right, let's go back and analyze what we've just heard. There was a lot in there. Back to the opening. What a pensive opening, especially compared to the original song. With this iconic beat opening. The opening we get in Deanna's version. 
<laughs> this kind of like dark, deep synthy sound. It reminds me of several songs, but one that comes to mind is this one. For any Stranger Things fans, that song is by his band. The original song too, it has this whole instrumental introduction. Deanna's version, we don't have any of that. That's quite a big decision, which contributes greatly to making this Deanna's own version of it. It's already so, so different and she's not even started singing yet. And of course we have instrumental changes too. Things are a bit darker here. Very synth wavy, retro wavy. Quite fitting for a cover of a song that came out in the 80s. In terms of the key, we're in the same key as the original song, which means that Deanna's melody will be at the same pitch as the original song, provided the melody isn't adjusted. We'll get to that in a bit. Aside from the obvious instrumental and structural changes we've already brushed on a little bit, it's not surprising that the arranger of this, Alexander, has changed the harmonic structure as well. The chord pattern that he uses is different. We can think of it as a four chord pattern. In the original we get this. In Diana's version we get with the bass part really driving this home, it sounds a bit peculiar. And then for the next phrase, the next four chord pattern, we think, ah, we're getting what we expect, the same as the original. Then we think we'll go here which is the next chord in the original, but instead we go to... So it's really only one note difference, but it changes the whole sound. But then just before the chorus, the chords used, the harmonic progression is the same as the original. So to me, it's this harmonic foundation of the music in this arrangement that is the biggest difference to the overall sound at a fundamental level. And then all of the other changes, the structure of the instruments, they're all enhanced by the harmonic changes. A couple of other things that really stand out, I mentioned the bass line earlier, well this is why. It's just equal rhythms. <laughs> very strict, restricted almost, you know, there's no rhythmic freedom. If we compare it to the original, you know, the bass is quite funky. Slap bass, irregular rhythms. This is another thing that's really important in changing the feeling of Deanna's cover. It almost seems calmer. And on the note of calmness, another reason why it might feel like this is because of the tempo. It's slowed down, so we have fewer beats per minute. The original is 169 beats per minute. Whereas Deanna's version is more around that 145 mark. So, so far from what we've heard, it suits her range perfectly. We've only heard the lower end so far, so she's not been able to get that much power behind the sound. But that's what we'd expect from the chorus, you know, a powerful chorus, at least in the original. It grows in power as we rise up in pitch. So what about Deanna's chorus? Well. We notice, firstly, a reduction in the musical texture, what instruments we're hearing. It's a calmer sound, there's less going on, and most importantly, there's no beat or bass like we've been hearing before. It's a tranquil, chordal sound. It's quite peaceful, almost. So because everything is a bit more tame, there's less going on, it allows us to focus more on her voice, what she's doing with the melody. And because that first note is too low for her, they're singing in the same key, the bottom of her range is kind of around here. But the start of the chorus is here. That's quite a bit lower. So they've adjusted the melody. Deanna sings. Whereas in the original, the notes are these, and there's this very iconic sounding opening interval. That's quite a dissonant interval, a major seventh, and to be honest, I think Deanna's suits the setting of this arrangement much better. Also, it's less movement for her, so it really allows her voice to grow into each note as we begin to hear that polyphonic element that's so famous of her voice to come through, along with her nice vibrato, the wobble in her voice, which is also quite airy at this point. 
I like the take on me's that we hear in the background. Nice little touch. Obviously, they're from the original, but I wasn't expecting them in this version because it's we're seeing just her singing. These are what we're hearing. These are open fifths or bare fifths. So as the name suggests, they're quite bare in terms of harmony. But the second time we hear them, look how much fuller the sound is. There's more parts now, voices and instruments. There are some juicy notes in there as well for some really subtle dissonances. So this time round, the take on me in the background acts as a bringer of more. Suddenly the arrangement, it's grown. And we hear the beat and the bass coming back now. And just to go back a tiny bit as well before we carry on, the second line of the chorus, take me on. No need for any melodic adjustment there. The same as the original. Her voice suits it perfectly and yeah, I mean, let's listen to that, especially the last note. That's that famous Diana voice right there. She's still in her chest voice before she moves up to a head voice for the final part of the chorus. So still in her chest voice and now, The words in a day or two, she rhythmically augments the first note of that phrase, which means that she makes it longer. In a day or two. Bum, 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 bum. If we compare it to the original, in a day or two. because she's elongated this first note, it means that the rest of the notes in the phrase are going to have to adjust as well. This results in a phrase where all of the notes are much more similar in terms of length to each other. The result? Well, I think it's this very smooth, again, calm sounding phrase. That leads perfectly into the climax, that top E. In a day or two. Now, I've not seen that much of Diana. I'm still relatively new to her and her music. This is our seventh Diana reaction. But from what I have seen, I imagine high sustained notes in her head voice are not that common an occurrence. I really like it. It's such a smooth tone. She's opting not to use vibrato, so no wobbles in her voice. We can hear a tiny bit trying to teeter through, but overall it's a flat sound. Not flat in terms of pitch. I mean, in terms of lack of vibrato. Maybe thinking about it as like a straight sound is probably better. Alright, so then at the halfway mark we get this, well, just a completely different section. It doesn't really bear any resemblance to the original song. Another way of making this version her own. I find it to be quite R&B or solely. Maybe it's the clicks that we hear and the bass line being so different to before. The bass line is moving up and down freely instead of the that 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 we were hearing earlier. And we also get some rather funky chords underneath, a lot of jazz type inflections, you know, like non-standard chords. Her melody as well, I, I think it is quite catchy. She starts off on that top note, outlining an A major chord. A major is the key we're in overall. And then her next phrase, There's something about this falling fifth that I just really like. Maybe as well because it takes it down into her lower register, which is more of a full airy sound. If I can say that, that sounds quite contradictory, I know. And then after that, we get a tiny little voice break. Just there, or a mini yodel, as I like to call it. Honestly, it's barely noticeable, but it is there. I feel it wouldn't be a Diana performance without at least one of them. So yeah, this whole section, it's just very unexpected. I think I'm still processing it. I'm not too sure how I feel about it overall, but it's nice to see. It's definitely her own performance. I do like the end of that section. We have this upwards run to finish it off. Which leads into the final chorus. She's chosen not to sing that first phrase or as she sung it last time. And instead of those take on me's, we instead hear a metallic string sounding instrument. And then she decides to join for the last two phrases of the chorus. Those take on me voices, we do hear them come back in, but they don't sing the word me. Yeah. 
that really caught me out. And then, yeah, we get that nice ending note. <laughs> The more you listen, let, let's listen again, especially that last bit. If you close your eyes, it really does not sound like a human voice. <laughs> to me, it sounds like a glass harmonica or something. Back in the day, it was believed that this instrument would make people mad, so it makes sense Diana's voice sounding quite similar to it. We know the effect that her voice can have on people. In my first reaction, again, if you haven't seen that, check it out, card up here. I thought I was going mad. Coupled with the throbbing synth effect that we get in the background, wow, wow. Yeah, it, it's quite simulating. Almost otherworldly. All right, let's leave that one there. Yeah, very cool. A nice short one. I like arrangements like this where they do make significant differences. It's a completely new take on such, such a famous song. Quite calm overall. Definitely more room for her to showcase those polyphonic elements in a calmer way. A bit more of an airy voice. All right, let's leave that one there. As always, thank you for watching. Would appreciate a like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know which Deanna reactions you want me to do in the future. If you enjoy my content, want to support me, join the community and vote on future polls, you can do so by joining the YouTube membership or Patreons linked down below and I will see you next time.